Hello, and welcome to the Million Dollar Speaker Podcast. Hi, I'm RV Robinson. I'm the master speaker trainer, international keynote speaker, four-time best-selling author, and a and your host for this Million Dollar Speaker Podcast. Now, this podcast is different from a lot of speaking podcasts out there because we talk about advanced topics on how you can become a million dollar speaker, reach millions of people, and make millions speaking. And so today we're going to talk about influence. And yes, the power of influence is our title for today's talk, because as a speaker, you have a great amount of influence, more than you know, on your audience. So when we think about speaking, as a speaker, we can change people's attitudes, we can change their of course, way of thinking, their ideas, their vision. We could change their lives. We can change their souls. And so that's the power of the influence that we have. So that with that influence comes great responsibility. And we have to be responsible for what it is we say. And of course, always speak the truth. Now, We see orators in our past. There's been good influencers. You know, we've had Martin Luther King, Winston Churchill, I mean, on and on and on. And we've had bad, right? We've had some bad ones. I don't want to even mention their names. We know who they are. But they both use the power of persuasion to influence others. And so we're going to spell out the word power. And the P stands for persuasion. So if you want to influence people and have that kind of, you know, um, impact, because it is impact, it's not power, it's impact, then you have to learn how to become more persuasive. So let me give you some tips on how you can do that. Number one, you've got to build rapport with your audience. You cannot influence anybody if they don't feel the love from you, if they don't have the trust and the rapport from you. So you need to build trust and rapport. You can do that many ways, calling them by name, showing them the love, looking in the their eyes, taking time with them, having conversations with them, letting them speak, giving them opportunities to participate, all of that kind of interaction, they start to feel the love and, and you build trust and rapport. So the best way to do that and have that kind of persuasion is to involve your audience. Now, another way is to make them feel significant. Yes, make your audience feel significant. Listen to them. When somebody in the audience speaks, call on them, reach out to them. Now, you don't want to zero in because remember, your entire audience lives vicariously through one person. So you always open your arms and like you're hugging the whole group, but you pick that one person and they talk and you address them, but you also address the whole group, but you make them feel important and their words. You can do that by saying, that's a great question. That's a great thought. Thank you for sharing that today. And I know it might sound eh, normal or I've heard that before, but do you do it? And do you do it with love in your heart? Do you really mean it? You know, wow, that was really profound what you said. I'm so glad you shared it with everybody. Do you want to repeat that? I mean, really make them feel important. So those two ways to the trust and rapport and make your audience feel significant will give you the power of persuasion. Now, the O in power, we're spelling out power, is for optimistic. You want to be optimistic. You want to influence your audience. You've got to be optimistic and not just, yeah, you know, I'm positive, blah, blah, blah. I mean, really know that it is going to work out right. Really know that you are going to make an impact. Really know that you are influencing others. But let me share something with you about influence. You might know it and be optimistic, but you will chances are never really know the true impact that you have on your audience because chances are they're not going to tell you 
So you just know you are making an impact, but in the rare chance or opportunity that you get to hear feedback, revel in it. That's a blessing. So let me give you an example. So there was a time several years ago, and I was asked to speak at a book event. And I spoke there the year before, and I brought my books to sell and that kind of thing. And as I was driving there, it was on a Saturday. It wasn't far from my home, but it was a Saturday. My husband at the time was ill. And I got this text that said, my 20 minutes now became 10 minutes. And so in my mind for a short second or two, I thought, you know what? I really don't need the practice. Maybe I'll just turn around and go and be with my husband for the day instead of spending the whole entire day there. But a voice told me, a small, still voice said, just go. I mean, I was already dressed. I took a shower that day and I was already ready to go and speak with bag in hand and books packed and all of that. So I did. And I went and I was gracious and I visited all the other vendors and bought their stuff. And, you know, and this was nine o'clock in the morning and I wasn't speaking till two o'clock in the afternoon. So I observed what was going on and I saw that they were having 30 minute breaks so that people could visit the vendors and the books and all of that. But by the afternoon, everybody had seen everything and nobody knew it was coming in. So I observed and I just went to the host and I said, you know, nobody's really walking around this particular break. Instead of a 30 minute break, maybe we could have 20 minute break and I could have the extra 20 minutes, 10 minutes. And she agreed and said, yes. So I got my 10 minutes back and had a 20 minute speech. So just the lesson within the lesson, always ask for more time, be gracious and loving, and then you never know if you're going to get it back. So I got it back and I delivered my presentation. And at the end of the presentation, this young woman came up to me and she told me that her father had Alzheimer's and that he, last year, she had bought the book and gave it to him, but that he couldn't find it. And he was so heartbroken because he was encouraged that he was going to help other Alzheimer's patients to uh, learn and to, you know, just speak and to, you know, get out there and, and share with others. So it was very moving. So I gave her a book for him and one for herself. And I told her, the only thing I'd like you to do is film it, you know, video it on your phone when you give it to him. I'd love to see his reaction. And she did and gave it to me. And I tell you, I was blessed. Now that's a rare case of me actually getting to find out the kind of impact, the kind of influence that I had on this individual and not only her, but it had the ripple effect to her father, who's also going to have the ripple effect on other people. So it's amazing. And just know that your words have that kind of effect on people or will have that kind of effect on people. When you follow these five guidelines, right? The art of persuasion. And of course, being optimistic. So you want to be optimistic and know it's going to go good. Know that you are going to affect somebody's life in that room. Because remember my mantra, if you listen to other podcasts, my mantra is, is that you have a message to share that only you can share to people that could only hear it from you. And that message will save somebody's life, their business, or even their soul. And you're the only one that can deliver it. And when you don't deliver it, those people go on suffering. If you can't deliver it ever, it will go to the grave with you. And so will those people that you were supposed to help serve and heal. That's how important it is. So getting back to the power of influence, being optimistic, knowing that your message is going to land on somebody, knowing that you're going to change lives in that room, regardless of someone coming up to you at the end of your talk and telling you, we're not doing it for that reason. We are stepping out on faith, even with our message and knowing that when we do our message right, when we practice and we hone it, and we craft a good message, we know it's going to land on the right people. 
The W in power is for winning attitude, winning attitude. You must step on stage with that winning attitude, knowing that you're not only going to win, but that others in that room are going to win too. They're going to win because of your presentation. So you just have this great attitude, full of enthusiasm, full of energy, because that's what's going to resonate with people, that you're setting yourself up to win and you're setting them, them up to win and to receive that message, winning attitude. Now, the E, I thought a lot about the E because I could have said expert. I could have said enthusiasm. I could have said energy. I could have said any one of those things, but no. You see, when I create an acronym, I don't create the acronym alone. Right? I believe I'm channel from God and God gives me the words to use to tell you. I go to my little book with words and I look through there until I'm stopped by a word. And I was stopped by not only one word, but two words for E. And so I want to share two words, which is really different. But the first one is extraordinary. Extraordinary. You, if you want to have the power of influence, you need to be extraordinary. So I want you to think about what would make you as a speaker extraordinary. What comes to mind for me is training, more training. You can never have too much training. More commitment, more practice. Remember what I say on these podcasts, you have to practice one hour for every two minutes of presentation. So people are always like trying to calculate it. It's real easy. Just cut your presentation in half and that's how many hours you need to practice. So if you have a 30 minute presentation, you need to practice minimum. 15 hours. If it's a 20 minute presentation, you need to practice 10 hours minimum. You can practice as much as you want, but minimum. Do you know the average time that speakers, at least business speakers, uh, practice? It's one hour, one hour. And a lot of times they practice driving or in the shower. That's not how you practice. You want you're a professional. You need to practice walking around, giving your speech out loud. You need to hear it. I mean, can you imagine actors or actresses doing it all in their mind and not actually, you know, changing lines on a stage or having dress rehearsals? It's ridiculous. Or an or a athlete not going to practice football practice and actually practicing with his team. I mean, it's ridiculous. We would never do that. But yet speakers think that they can practice without truly practicing and you can't you've got to say it it's not a book it's not a reading assignment it's not an article you don't write out your speech for one thing you out your you don't write it all out you outline it and then you practice it out loud for one hour for every two minutes all right that's how you get good that's how you become extraordinary now the other letter that i came up with in e is excellence right? Excellence. I love that word. Striving for excellence. I want you to just keep going, not halfway do it, but just keep going, striving for that excellence in everything that you do in every way that you present, all the way from how you open your speech to your story, to your close, to your offer, your invitation, to even your Q&A session if you decide to have one, the closing, the memorable statement, all of it. Strive for excellence. And again, one of the ways you can get there is through rehearsal and practice, but strive for it, expect it, demand it, know it's going to happen and you will become excellent and extraordinary. Now, the last one is the R. Now, again, I could have picked many things for the R. I could have picked rehearsal because you can't have power of influence without rehearsal. But instead, I picked relentless. You need to be relentless. No matter what you talk about, if you want to influence others, if you want to have that impact, 
If you want to change lives, change souls, save businesses, you've got to be relentless. That means you need to speak anywhere anybody will listen. You've got to continue to get out there. you got to continue to take training. you got to continue to, to take lessons, to study, to rehearse, all of it. You have to be relentless. So those of you that know me knows that about eight, almost a year ago, I took up bodybuilding and I took it up to manage my grief after my husband and my two dogs died two years ago. And I have learned that you need not only commitment and dedication, but consistency. Consistency is key because I've worked out all my life. I've worked out since, well, with trainers since 2006. But now it's different because I, I have a goal. I have a goal to be in a bikini contest. I have a big goal, and that's the only way I can manage my grief. And to get that goal, I had to up the game. So I work out six days a week. I get up at five o'clock every morning, and I'm at my gym by six. I work out for 90 minutes, and then I you know, do my thing and go to work. Commitment, six days a week. I take Sundays off, and I don't let anything get in the way of my of my working out, nothing. It's secondary. People want me to do something. I say, no, that's my workout time. I do it in the morning before I get busy because I know, just like you, if I saved it for 5.30 in the evening, I wouldn't feel like it. I wouldn't do it. It would be too hot. There'd be a million excuses. So I want you to treat speaking the same way. Be relentless. Don't let anything get in the way of your practice, of your developing your speech, of you getting speaking engagements. You've got to be committed. Set goals for yourself, big goals. What stages do you want to be on? Think about it, write it down, outline it. That's how you're going to make it happen. Be relentless. Don't let anything, anybody stop you. Got it? All right. So that is the power of influence. The P is for persuasion. O is for being optimistic. W is for winning attitude. E is for extraordinary, extraordinary and excellence. And R is for relentless. And you too can use that power to impact the lives of each individual in your audience. And you are blessed if you ever find out exactly how you've changed their life. So that's our lesson for today. Tune back in for next week for more. In the meantime, get out there and speak, reach more people, and make millions. Bye for now. <laughs>